Good morning, Fran. Good morning. I forgot to close the video last night. Um, so we were just having so much fun. We got to the secret meeting with Lieutenant Croy, which I do have clips of. Um, and then we were here in the, uh, we came to the cruise director's thing. That's what I need to do. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's been amazing. Good journey. Good morning. It's been an incredible, amazing um, trip so far. So, we just just finished breakfast. Um, it's been yes, my husband. <laughs> been a busy morning already. Getting ready to go plan inside um, after sunscreen. Uh, but we were reflecting a little bit on how invested everyone is and everybody's here because they want to be here they're not just here because it's a thing to do everybody is playing the game everybody is their heart is in it and that really makes makes it fun it does because especially as an adult like Kids play all the time, but as an adult, to be able to kind of take off that pressure and seriousness and play a character um, and run around and interact with people like and this is like D and D but better. Amazing! It's so it's such an incredible experience. I'm so glad I'm able to be here for this. I know I've said that a million times, but this really is an incredible experience. And more adventures to have today. Yes. And we found ourselves pulled in different directions. I didn't see. intend on going, but... Yeah. Um, we've ended up managing to pull the double agent route, which was not expected, and was not necessarily even intentional. But it's really fun. It's really fun. We have managed to get Lieutenant Croy on side. Um, we were invited to his secret fancy meeting last night. Um... Yeah, and then it, and, and then of course he had to go and put a restraining bolt on SK, which you know, Damper. Sammy did it. But we also know restraining bolts can be removed, which I trust Sammy has the engineering know-how to do that. Like everyone has a healthy appreciation for Star Wars and general nerdness and shenanigans. Yeah, we're all here for a good time. Yeah, it, it's been. I mean, I know I'm missing so much on the video and. I'm going to have to fill it in with voiceover or text or something, taking as many notes as I can, just trying to capture it and remember it all. We got Lieutenant Corey to sing. He sang Sara Mara Line, because although I'm going by Lemon in uh, on ship by everybody else, for some reason, I decided not to give him my name. I decided to give him Lime, and he has decided to cling on to that. So we are Sara Mara Lime. Sara Mara Lime. Sara Mara Lime. And he walked around the sublight lounge singing Sara Mara Lime. And then he danced with Gaia. They made him. Then he danced with he Gaia. He a glow stick. He was handed a glow stick by Ray, and he took it like... It's like, I don't know what to do with this. But he did. And then last night, at our after the final uh, showdown, I did give him another glow stick. And he, he did... He, he took willingly. With a, he with a tiny little... About it. A turn of the lips. Yes. Not a full smile. Because Imperials first order, they don't. No. But again, trying to keep him on side so we can crush his soul. Because we, we are, we are at least I am, rebellious. And that's kind of it. Everybody's just real. Like, everybody stays in character, but we'll drop out and have a little nerd conversation. And everyone's just Every, having a good time. Exactly. It is... It's great to be with a community of like-minded people, but everybody has the same attitude. Everybody is here to live their best Star Wars life and invest, because these are the last voyages. The closing has been announced, and these are people, a lot of them are second return voyagers, third time, multiple, like, people have been here multiple times because this experience is so unlike anything else. Well, good journey, everyone. Are we all excited to travel to planet today? Woo! Oh, come on. I need from you, too. Are we excited to travel Woo! planet today? Woo! Okay, a little bit better before going in. You're going to be traveling on Oga Fair's personal transport that she was so gracious to let us borrow, but only so gracious to allow us to use it until 4 p.m. I, I do like your work, so uh, it would be a little bit of a shame. 
He should. He can't fly me here. He's like little wings. Little wings can't fly far. I can't fly. I'm gonna hand you all these pins. Of course, to make sure we are not losing these pins. Thank you. As we unfortunately, cannot give you another one. One and only. Got our passenger pins on. We're about to board the transport. Transport. Transport one. This is AJ10 on the Halcyon Star Cruiser. You are clear to undock. Copy control. Activating undocking sequence now. Copy that. And for your safety, please remain seated throughout your voyage. Hold on to the handrails with your hands, tentacles, and other appendages. And please supervise your young legs. Uh, thank you. Place in the galaxy, but she's home. And bonus, us locals don't ask too many questions. Bright suns. Oh, those suns are indeed bright. And wet. <laughs> Ooh, fancy signage. Okay. Hello, boys. Oh, down, please. You better have a permit for that. I'm not coming close enough to check. Doodles. The first order. We will be watching you. I'm best buddies with the first order. <laughs> I love Stormies. They're so fun to mess with. Batu East always messes me up, but we are. Escaping, we're going off planet. We're gonna go ride runaway railway. We're gonna go ride runaway railway because the wait time is 15 minutes right now. And I love runaway railway and I haven't been to- Cal I've never ridden it, so this will be my first Your time. Your first time. I haven't been to the one in California yet. I've done it here a handful of times, but this is like, so I loved it. So I'm like, I, I, I need to. We are off to go see a perfect picnic. Runaway railway. Remember, it is vital that you keep the location of the Bakara base secret. Lieutenant Beck, one of our top commanders, will lead you. May the force be with us. Okay, in to go. Resist! I just want to be sure. All recruits must be on board now. Transport is away in 30 seconds. No what? Good. I am Lieutenant Beck. As you heard from Gray, I have been tasked with getting you to Vakara. Look, we're on a Star Destroyer. I don't think these are as friendly as uh, a passenger. Hello, gentlemen. We will learn the location of your secret base. Judging by the looks of you, it won't take long. <laughs> that implies we know where it is. Or this is Cantina Chronicles, which we basically have missed all of. But Bryn is our uh, host here. So all I know is, I, yes, I believe this one, water. Yes. Tastes like water. This was the one that has the poison spitter that we've already been given the antidote for. So they put two drops of the antidote in there. Oh, that's, that's very sour. I like sour though. I do like sour. I like that. Okay, I'm gonna taste these because I don't know what they are. What a pleasure. Ooh. Don't start with that one. That's very herbal. Oh my god. We started with the poison spitter. We already oh, got the internet. The oh, well, we got here late. And then we also have, we have that Spirits of Adventure. Oh, I would definitely refer to what. We have shenanigans Ooh. and. Yes, this one is lovely. I like this one best. I don't know what this one is, but this one is best. Whatever this blue one is. Yeah. Libations. Tasty, tasty things. Yeah. We got tasting well, silver sea martini. With the Mark of the Huntress. Mm. Cloud of like, Bespin. I am Driver's delight. I am scared. Mm. You already have it. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. 
guest services desk or passenger services has snackies. So we got the. All right, everyone ready? Everyone. So I used to work for the Hut Clans when I was there, starting off very, very young. They start you off about that tall. So anyone know about the huts? Huts like to collect things, right? Mm -hmm. Huts like things. There's some huts who love, of course, like the finer things of life, like art, antiquities. Maybe there's maybe there's some shiny things. There's also huts that like to collect a lot of different creatures. Yep. Thankfully, I did not work for one of those. That would have been awkward. <laughs> anyone know about all of our drinks? No. They're no. right behind me. I've been They're curious. all colorful, <laughs> except for this one. Don't drink this, you'll die. <laughs> the Cal rating is a rating of drinks all throughout the galaxy. It starts at it starts at a one, goes up to a five. Our drinks are going to be in the humanoid limit, the safety limit. It's going to be about a 2.8 to a 3.4. So in case anyone doesn't know about that fuzzy tauntaun, it is a drink made with a foam that makes your face numb. After you have a few of them, you can't feel a thing. Mm -hmm. That's going to be about a 2.4 on the Cal rating. So it's going to be a little lower, but it's not in the humanoid safety area. So be very careful when you go to Oga's. Oga doesn't care about your safety, only about all of your credits. We're going to start off today with the Silver Sea Martini. This is going to be on the lower end of our Cal rating, going to be about a 2.8. So it's a nice drink to start off with. If you ever go to the Silver Sea, you will... It's a big body of water there, actually. You really can't miss it. Mm -hmm. um, but if you look at it, you'll probably think to yourself, <laughs> why is it called the Silver Sea? Because it's not silver. It's pink. So there was a patron who was there at a cantina, that, and it was on the shores there of the Silver Sea, and he was there to celebrate the end of the battle. And of course, after a few drinks, he found his way up onto the roof. And of course, it overlooks the Silver Sea, so it's a beautiful, beautiful vista. And as he was drinking, it got a little darker. And as he was done, he raised his glass and he said, By the grace of Shandrilla. And as he said that, it's almost as if the sea answered his call and it started to glow. By the grace of Shandrilla. Tasting. Probably the Purple. mint is going to be yeah, right there, like right? The I get the mint at the finish. A lot of people see gin and they don't really care for gin too much. They think no. it's a harsh spirit. It's not. Because there are some gins out there that are harsh. If you've ever been to Endor, oh my there's a spirit in that tastes like you're licking a tray. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, that is not ours. Ours is more of almost like a floral gin. Yes. And there's a rose water, the cucumber, to rose give it a nice, a nice taste. And this is one of my absolute number one favorite drinks because not only looks good, it also tastes amazing as well. I'm gonna go back in time a little bit, about a hundred years ago. So the huts turned this into almost like a gaming ship, a casino ship, because it was their way to get around all of the intergalactic regulations regarding gambling. Anything's legal in hyperspace. Anything's mm -hmm. legal in hyperspace, yes. <laughs> Do you know what happens when you owe a hut? Terrible things. Yeah, nothing good. Yeah. yeah. So they're gonna put a mark on your head. They're gonna put a bounty out on you mm -hmm. they want to collect those credits. So there was a young bounty huntress who came on board because you know she had heard that it was an easy place to get it to get a job. But there's just one problem when you're starting out as a bounty hunter. You don't know where to start, right? It's not a job that you can just decide to wake up one day and say, I'm going to be a bounty hunter today. So as I said, this is going to give you the courage until the end. Courage till the end? Courage until the end. All right, what's everyone thinking? I would have right? never picked this one off the menu, but it's nice. Ooh. A lot of people, yeah, that is what they say, because yeah. they're not yeah. a fan of the spirit. Yeah. They don't like bourbon. I have a but we have a lot of other things that go into this drink. That's really it. nice. This, Lovely. this is my number one favorite drink on the menu, because when I drink this, I end up in strange places. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's also one of the hardest drinks to make here. In this one drink, there are 12 different ingredients. Wow. That go into this one drink. So this drink is going to be the cloud of Bespin. This is what you'll be served when you go to visit Bespin. When you get off all your transports, it'll be served to you as almost like a welcome. But if you do talk to Wozak, he will tell you all about this drink. This is his drink. This is what he brought from Bespin. He stole the recipe. I don't like that word. Stole is a harsh word, especially when you used to work for us. Trauma. He was here one night in the lounge. He was enjoying this cloud of Bespin, enjoying the atmosphere. A lot of people play, of course, with Spock. And he was just walking around with his drink. And as he was going around, he noticed these two creatures that were standing off in the corner alone. So as he got a little closer, he realized he couldn't understand them. Didn't know what language they were speaking. And as he got up to them, they said a word to each other. Ruffala. 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 Does that mean anything to you? No. Okay. no. If ever you are in an establishment and you are enjoying a drink and you hear this being said, make sure it's not being said about you or around you. If it's said to you, um, you may want to It is a way that for bounty hunters to identify themselves to each other. Ruffala. <laughs> Ruffala. 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 We're all bounty hunters. We're all now bounty hunters, apparently. Yeah, we're all bounty hunters. Yeah. So what does everyone think about the taste of this, though? Yeah, it's more of like a juicy taste. Might not come out at all. It's sweet. <laughs> I'm like, tell them why it's not coming out. Tart. I'm tasting almost like a tart. cherry flavor in there. So the rum is going to be almost like a cherry like okay. flavored <laughs> rum, but it's not a flavored yeah, rum. That's it. just yeah, how it's made. Damn. Right. Um, it yeah, is so made a here. on an yeah, island. It. So when you drink with an Enzalan, you are going to probably hear something. It is going, it is going to be Ajiga. Has anyone heard that on board here? Yeah, yeah. they that. Yeah. So Ajiga is, is an old Enzalan phrase. It almost starts as like a welcome. But once you get to drinking, it sort of, it sort of you know, almost like evolves. Um, so when you are drinking with a little Enzalan and you hear that said to you, you have to say it back. Like in basic, it means basically though I am here, I am present, I am in the moment, I'm giving my true self. It's like you want to put down all of your data pads, um, you just want to embrace the moment that you are with in honor of Chuck. So I will say to all of you, Adiga. Adiga. Yeah, that's a Negroni. Very good. Not my favorite. Mm. No. Oh. 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 There it hit. That's special. There's the bitter. There's the. Yeah. There's the Campari. Going through the spirits of adventure. Um, least favorite to favorite. What was your least favorite? The um, Joy Boar's Delight. It had the vermouth and the bitters. And when you first sip it, you're like, this is fine. And then it is gone. And then the Campari comes through. Um, I'm not a huge Negroni <laughs> fan. I love my gin, but I'm not a Negroni fan. So. I took two one, I, I think I took one and a half. Mm -hmm. And the second one of those. Second least favorite. Now, this is hard because I like the other three. but The other three were all excellent. The Silver Sea Martini was very good, but I would mark it as third. Really? Yes. I would actually mark Cloud of Bespin as my third. I, there was a, I, I tasted a lot of cherry in it, at least for me, and I don't like cherry flavoring. Interesting. See, I love, I love rum. So I got a lot of that, like, the dark, sweet of the rum, and then you got the part of the juices, and I love that. So, yeah. Okay. Number two. What was your number two? Um, it's going to be the Mark of the Hunters. Pleasantly surprised, I do not like what drink, but with the way that it blended with the other things, it had like a nice, rich quality of whiskey, with complexity of Mark of the Hunters. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Trying to get us out of here yeah. at two o'clock. I still have a little bit because it's a sipping drink. Mark of the Hunters yeah. is definitely a sipping drink. Yes. It knocked. I, I'm still trying to figure out which one's my favorite. I'm tied between Cloud of Vestment and Silver Sea Martini. You're t you, you have a clear favorite. Cloud of Vestment is my favorite, and that has been my favorite. I had that drink. That was my first drink on the ship, my first trip, and I 
I think actually I'm gonna have to say Silver Sea Martini is my number two. Okay. Simply because again I get that cherry flavor out of it. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not a huge cherry person. But so I'm gonna finish the thing on this mark of the huntress. The mark of the huntress I think came out of left field and was my number one. I am not a bourbon whiskey drinker at all. I have like no bur I have one bourbon in the house. And I usually use it to put an apple cider. But I also am a gin person and the gin is not my favorite. So with the bourbon that we use, we use we use them in aged bourbon, so it's a like much a smoother taste because there's some harsh yeah. ones out there. Yeah. That just like, that'll strip the paint off your speeder. Yes, they will. Station. Gentlemen, you are brave enough to face individuals. <laughs> <laughs> What the whole systems control system Can we live is? without love, though? No. Your sparkling eyes are all the sea. Yes. Brighter than a whole galaxy. Um, when we are in harmony. Yes, yes, my heart sings like a melody. My heart like sings like a melody. Yes. 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 Also, don't say your name quite yet. Better than anyone for me. This is a song for I'm 
So we're sitting down, it's about five o'clock, and we are very puzzled. <laughs> we haven't received any communications from anyone pretty much since uh, since 3.30. Now, 3.30 being generous because one of them was a result of our mission that we did on Batu, right. which we didn't even attend in person because we were in our lightsaber training. So we those, got the we got those communication to say, like, we did it, hooray, stand by for more. We and got. nothing. So we've gone and talked to passenger services, but everybody, everything I have read and everything I've heard says, day two, after four o'clock, you are going to be run ragged. We have had nothing to do since 3.30. Yeah. And the first, the first bit of information was wait and see if it comes. Yeah. And so we, we did. did wait. And now it's five o'clock and we're still waiting. So it's a little frustrating um, that we're, it's definitely impacting the day two vibe. Yeah. Because yeah. there is no vibe. There's, there's stuff going on in the atrium, which is nice that you can like see and do things. Right. But there's no go we'll meet here in this room. And we've heard we have gone double agent. We've heard nothing from Lieutenant Croy. We've heard nothing from Lenka. We've heard nothing. So we are wondering if going double agent locked us out of something. But I've heard that other people did get invited to like different yeah. finales and things. We've also heard nothing from Sammy. We've heard nothing another, from. We haven't heard that's anything a from Sammy. Rooms up on day two. Yeah. When did we hear anything? We haven't heard anything from Sammy since we got back, for sure. Yeah. Last we heard from Sammy was noon. Twelve fifteen was when we got the last piece from Sammy, and that was when we got back from Batu, and we scanned in at the cargo bay, and that's it. We've heard nothing since noon, and we are going for the resistance ending. So we don't know what's going on. Editor Courtney here. We waited for over two hours, observing the activities in the atrium, doing some songwriting with Sandro, even observing the heist with Wraith. Although I didn't realize that was what was happening. But given this was my one and only experience on the Halcyon, I wanted the full experience. We found out later that comms are supposed to resume at around 4 o'clock p.m. Whether or not you've responded to the message as you come back on the Halcyon that you have returned for the day. Even though we had responded that we had returned for the day, we got no further communications. While they were at first a little bit confused, the amazing crew in blue managed to actually switch our scheduled bridge finale to a resistance aligned finale, which was the plan we'd had all along. We both intended to take a resistance path. However, we were still missing all of the messages and the plans leading up to these finales. This meant that we had no communication about anything happening in the cargo bay or engineering spaces, any of those sub finales. Ultimately, this meant that we didn't get to participate in any of the activities in the engineering room or cargo bay. With the knowledge that our data pads were malfunctioning, we had a plan to reach out to characters directly to try to see if we could get an in-person invite or some sort of information from them directly. We only ran into one character. And upon asking them, they just told us, check your data pad and kind of brushed us off. Lieutenant Croy, on the other hand, was extremely put out that we were not with him down in the engineering room as he set his plans into motion. I give the performer a lot of credit for salvaging our absence while still in character. I also really want to give a shout out to the amazing crew in blue for helping us still get that hectic day two finale feel which you'll see a little bit more of in the next video. Later that night, the crew in blue worked with hospitality to get us a comic book keepsake, and it was a really nice gesture from them. I did reach out to Star Cruiser guest relations after returning from the Halcyon to try to troubleshoot and figure out what happened. Not just to share what had happened, but I didn't want anybody else to run into this. I think I sent them a three page long bug report with screenshots, timestamps, everything just trying to make sure that they understood what happened and to try to prevent it for anybody moving forward. Ultimately, they gave me a call back, but I missed the call because I was at work. They said to call back in their voicemail 
I tried calling back, the number didn't go through, so I haven't heard back from them since. Even months later, and after her closing, I can't shake the fact that I feel like I missed a major part of the experience. I never got to play in the engineering room or cargo bay or even see what those spaces were used for. It's still to this day my biggest regret and pretty much my only regret about the experience. I do want to clarify something though before I wrap this up. Just because something like this happened does not mean that the Star Cruiser wasn't an amazing experience. It doesn't mean that I had a bad time. I had an incredible time getting to live my best Star Wars life. But there were gaps in my experience, and also gaps in the footage, sorry about that, that I was really hoping wouldn't be there. Ultimately, my trip and my story felt a little disjointed. It was amazing, but it was a little disjointed. 